What is up, my ducks and drakes? Welcome to the Crotta Lake. Today we'll be reading Scribbles by Sketchy Nebula on Tumblr, chapters 9 and 10. The trigger warnings will be listed in the description below. Please stay tuned to the end of the video to learn about an event I'm doing for December called the Gift of Fan Fiction, where I will need your participation. Until then, I hope you enjoy the story. Chapter 9 The events of the day before crashing into him, the moments he had lived a hazy mess, his mind filled with familiar anguish, familiar thoughts. He shouldn't be here. He'll ruin everything. Rudolph's eyes cracked open. His body was floating, warmth surrounding him. There was a white plush and soft, and he idly wondered if he was dead as he slumped at the white in front of him, his fingers slipping on the fabric as he pressed a handprint into his down blanket. He let his eyes slip open a little farther, and he dulled, realizing he was on a bed, a really nice bed. The comforter pulled up around him like a sea of clouds. His mind tried to fade back into the fog, the softness and warmth around him cradling him. He was about to sink back into nothingness he was in before, only for his common sense to come crashing into him. He didn't know where he was. He tried to sit up, leaning to get his body to cooperate. He was too sore, too tired. He flopped back down, the few centimeters he had managed to pull himself, not even shifting the blankets. He rolled from his side onto his back, looking at the ceiling. The walls were white, patterns of gold and red embellishing the area. The bed was big, a queen-sized bed spread that was definitely better than a rock-solid spring-loaded one he had. His stomach was settled, the soreness in his throat was the only reminder about his illness. His headache was barely a throb, but his body was still so tired. He lazily pulled his arm out around the blankets, the white, clean bandages wrapping around his elbow and wrist, keeping him from agonizing the scrapes there. "'You're awake,' the voice said. Virgil's eyes moved to the door where Patton was standing, a smile on his face, his eyes wide with relief. Patton was holding a tray with a bowl and a glass of water. A golden lump of buttered bread was propped on behind it. Virgil's eyes followed as Patton walked forward, setting the tray down on the nightstand before moving to sit on the area of bed next to Virgil. Patton reached out, cupping his cheek, and Virgil leaned into the contact, his cheek twitching a little at the contact, his mind screaming at him. The events of the day before crashing into him, the moments he had lived in hazy mess, his mind filled with the familiar anguish, familiar thoughts. He shouldn't be here. He'll ruin everything. Fate doesn't make mistakes, he firmly told himself, his eyes fluttering closed as Penn reached up to gently run his other hand through Virgil's hair. Penn moved the hand away from his cheek. We have to just finish. Logan froze in the doorway. Roman, behind him. Oh, thank God, Roman said, his hand rubbing his forehead, his other hand clutching the doorway as he slumped, and Virgil felt something in his stomach twist. He was ruining everything. He was... Fate doesn't make mistakes. But what if... No. No, it doesn't. It doesn't make... Logan cleared his throat and Patton smiled. The sleepy head's awake, Patton said gently. Roman was there, gently brushing against Virgil as he climbed on the bed to lay back against the small pile of pillows next to him. Virgil watched him carefully, body desperate to lean into the contact. We need to change your bandages, Logan stated, shifting a little. Also, I'd like to check your torso. He listed off, absentmindedly counting each of the things on his fingers. And get you cleaned up. We could have done it earlier, but we didn't want to do any sort of undressing without your conscious consent, unless it was life or death. Roman reached down, hooking his hands under Virgil's armpits as he pulled Virgil up from having to peer up at them over the fluff of the blankets. Roman settled him down, leaning him against the same soft pile Roman himself was sat up against. Virgil let himself fall a little to the wayside, leaning against the other. His eyes flickered up, probing Roman's face for a disgust or rage that he never found. Roman pulled him a little closer, making Virgil's eyes start to water. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yes, I mean, he said, and Logan smiled. How comfortable would you be with Roman undressing you? Pennant asked as his eyes meeting Virgil's both of them shining warm pools of sincerity. I- Virgil choked out on his words, his voice cracking. Sure. Thank you. Always, Robin said, making Virgil look at him as he gently shifted the other's body into his arms. 
How are you feeling today, Virgil? Logan asked as Roman gently pulled Virgil's arms, hiking up his shirt a little bit in order to move his limbs out of the sleeves. I'm better. I'm not nauseous anymore, Virgil said, trying to help Roman a little by guiding his wayward limbs, his cheeks hot pink as Roman's hands brushed against his bare skin. I'd hope so. You've been sleeping for a day, Logan said, and Virgil felt a rush of panic at that. What? Wait, what? Wait, wait. Virgil said hysterically, and Roman hushed him, pausing his movement to cradle the other in his chest. It's all right, Patton said, his smile tight as he reached out to brush Virgil's bangs from his forehead. Virgil's heart clenched. They were doing so much for him, and his dark cloud self can't even appreciate it. He swallowed hard, and Patton cupped his face in his hands, pulling his eyes up. You slept all the way through Tuesday, Patton began. We were scared we would have to take you to the hospital. Your fever got worse before it got better, but it broke sometime around midnight last night. Logan nodded, pushing his glasses up his face. I am very glad that one of Roman's mothers is a surgeon. Otherwise, I don't think we would have known what to do on our own. This is Roman's room? Virgil asked, mind screaming at him. And of all the things he needed to worry about... That was the one he decided to focus on? Yes, Roman stated. Would you mind if I continued? Virgil nodded his head and Roman pulled him up a little bit more. What time is it? He asked, and Logan pulled out his phone. Turning it on for a brief three seconds, he nodded to tell the time. Around noon, Virgil felt himself go pale, his eyes widening. He wasn't at school. He missed another day, unexcused. He got a detention. Roman got Virgil's other hand through the sleeve, pulling the shirt from its place loosely hanging around its neck. As soon as the garment was pulled off, Patton gasped, hands flying to his mouth. Logan's lips thinned out, his face suddenly stern. Virgil felt Roman clutch onto him, pulling him back into his chest. Virgil looked down, grimacing. He was thin, really thin. The imprints of his ribs could be barely seen through his skin on his chest, and he was bruised. Too many days and meals consisting of a glass of water. Too many prioritizing debt over buying food. We're, we're going to get this in you. Right, right now, Patton said, pulling the tray of food back to him, kneeling on the bed and moving it to Virgil. I'm going to run the bath, Roman said, his face blank as he pulled away. Virgil immediately missed the warmth of the other, his stomach falling as the other pulled away. Logan swiftly left, the only sign that he had ever moved being the sound of the closing door. I'm sorry, Virgil said. He didn't know why, but he felt like he needed to say it. His heart sore, his mind weighty with how disgusting he must look. Patton's face fell, his hand reaching out to cup Virgil's face again. Virgil watched in horror as a tear ran down Patton's cheek, a soft sniffle making his heart fall. It's his fault. He made Patton cry. How could he? He is ruining everything. Before he could re react, before he could pull himself from the sheets, eject himself from the warmth and the pull from their lives, Patton pulled a hug in, tucking Virgil's head beneath his chin. Oh, sweetie, you have nothing to be sorry for, he said, and Virgil's mind screamed at him. He had everything to be sorry for. I'm just upset that you were so, so badly taken care of. I Patton squeezed him a little. Virgil's mind rapidly flipping the words over in his head as Patton pulled away. Now, um, Patton sniffled, wiping his face with the back of his hand. Let's get the soup in ya, huh? Patton picked up the spoon, dipping in a liquid before holding out in front of Virgil's face. Virgil hesitated. Of course Patton had to feed him. Virgil had proven to be completely useless at everything else. Why wouldn't he have need their help to do something so basic. Virgil had to say the worst part was that he needed help. The bandages on his elbows would make it impossible to bend his arm enough to get the spoon in his mouth. He opened his mouth, and Pan spooned him the food. Virgil clenched his fists, thinking about all the things the other three should be doing right now, the time they are wasting because Virgil couldn't handle himself for one measly illness. The soup was nice, though, the broth warm enough to warm the, his center without burning his tongue. It pulled in his stomach, being the first thing to fall in his empty 
well for quite a while. Pen broke off a few pieces of buttered bread, holding them in front of Virgil's mouth. Roman was angry, his hands turning the taps of the bathtub a little more violently than necessary. He had questions. He didn't have enough inform information, and he knew that. Logan was better at this than him, not acting before he had all the information. Roman needed to calm down, though. He had to be calm enough, and even though every part of him cried out for him to go find what was hurting Virgil and kill it, he knew he had to focus on what really mattered. Virgil. By the time the tub was halfway full, he was calm enough and more carefully poured some bubble bath into the mix. Roman didn't do things halfway. He walked back into the room, Pan and apparently having finished feeding Virgil, taking to just holding the other in a hug, rocking them both slightly at the waist, as one of his hands lightly rubbed Virgil's stomach. Roman smiled, clearing his throat a little, so Pat and Virgil turned to him. Virgil's eyes were lit a little, his jaw lax, his cheeks slowly went pink, and he finally registered Roman was there. The bath is ready, Roman said, and Pat nodded his head, away, grabbing at the tray a little to take him down. Roman's heart clenched as he watched Virgil's face fall. He was watching after Patton, like the other was leaving forever instead of just going to the living room with Logan. Not that he blamed Virgil. They had left him alone. They left him alone for four years. What kind of soulmates did that? Roman fought a frown, trying his best to keep a smile on his face as he walked forward, filling the empty space as he gently pulled a few of the blankets off Virgil. The other gave a shiver at the loss, and Roman could only think about how thin he was. He gently wrapped his arm around Virgil's shoulders, moving the other under the other's legs. Would you mind if I picked you up and took you to the bathroom? Roman asked, and Virgil hesitated, mouth opening and closing before he looked down. I... I... I can walk myself, he said, not sounding too convinced himself. Roman's lips thinned, pressing together as he pulled halfway. All right, he said, hands staying in the air as he watched the other shakily stand. He placed his hand on the other's lower back, pulling Virgil closely enough to lean against his side. Roman helped into the bathroom, watching as the other's eyes widened, his face going lack as he stared, eyes flicking around the room. It's, um, big, he stated in Roman's brown furried. His bathroom was about the average in his size, not really worth the reaction the other had just given. Then again, Roman didn't know how Virgil had been living for the past fifteen years. The fact scared Roman more than anything else ever could. He settled Virgil down in the toilet seat, and just then, Patton entered the bathroom, holding a new set of clothes. They're one of my PJ sets, Patton said, placing the folded pile on the sink. Roman looked back at Virgil. They needed to get his pants and underwear off, and he hasn't known how long Virgil was willing to be received help in the situation. Virgil, we need to get you undressed, he started, and Virgil's face turned red, his eyes growing shut. I just... I'll do it, Virgil said, and Roman nodded, his hands pulling Virgil forward, leaning Virgil's head against his shoulder as he quickly unzipped the other's jeans and pulling them down along with his underwear and kicking them away. Roman held Virgil's arms in the other and stepped into the water, both him and Patton evading their eyes until Virgil was covered by the bubbles. Virgil groaned, his body hit the water, visibly relaxing under the warmth of the bath. Roman watched, happy that at least now he could make sure Virgil was properly taken care of. Logan walked in, the sound of the door opening, having them all turning to see him standing in the doorway, holding a first aid kit. His eyes looked up briefly before placing the kit besides the clothing. "'Let me take off your bandages,' Logan said, walking over to kneel by the tub. Virgil's eyes followed him, before he hesitantly reached out and allowed the other to start maneuvering his arms around. Roman's eyes lingered, his hands itching. He didn't really know what Logan was doing, besides the obvious fact that he was changing Virgil's bandages. His mama explained how to do it to Logan, N not him. And as he watched Logan move, with calculated precision, he suddenly felt useless again. He needed to do something. I'm... I'm just... I'm gonna go put the rest of the soup away, Roman said, and Patton nodded at him as he left for the kitchen. Patton watches Logan suddenly unwrap the bandages, revealing the scabs on Virgil's elbows. That looks good enough to leave unwrapped. 
Logan said, his voice pleasantly surprised. Pennon watched as Logan threw the soiled bandages in the trash can near the toilet, Logan's eyes snapping back and forth for a moment before he nodded to him, glancing back at Virgil as he unsurely left the room. Pennon smiled as Virgil cupped some of the bubbles in the bathtub, bring them to his palms and lightly squish. His face pulled a little smile, shaking out of the hands, and Pennon hummed. Your hands okay? He asked, kneeling by the bathtub, and Virgil dunked his hands in the tub, letting the residue of soap wash away so he could see the rough pink burns on his hands. Yeah, they've been better days. He croaked, and Patton frowned. Here, Patton began, pulling the shampoo bottle at the end of the tub to him. I'll wash your hair so you don't have to hurt your hands. Virgil frowned, looking down at his hands before looking back up at Patton. Um... Okay, he said, and Patton smiled. Alrighty, lean back and wet your hair, please. Virgil hesitantly leaned back, pulling himself back up after maybe a millisecond. Patton frowned, using one of his hands to lightly push at Virgil's chest. Uh, a little longer, kid, kiddo, he said, and Virgil was blushing again. He dipped back, his eyes looking everywhere but at Patton as he significantly wet his hair. When Virgil pulled up, Patton lightly pushed him to turn around enough so that he could access the other scalp. Patton lathered the shampoo onto his hands, gently threading his fingers in Virgil's hair, and the other's head ducking at the first touch of feeling. Patton watched the other's, lips pinched as he lightly rubbed at the crown of Virgil's head. Virgil slowly went lax, letting out a small puff of air. The corner of Patton's mouth quirked up, his hands gentle as he worked the shampoo into Virgil's hair, fingers slowly rubbing in small circles. As the soap was fully lathered into his hair, Patton's hands moved down, going from moving its small circles onto the scalp to gently pressing into his back and neck. Patton's hands moved down until he was rubbing Virgil's shoulders, smelling as the other's tension disappeared under his fingers. Pettit moved his hands up to tilt Virgil down again, guiding him down in order to wash the shampoo out of his hair. The other let him face his face a lot less distressed this time around as the shampoo diluted. Penn's eyes caught onto the other's torso and Virgil leaned back, Penn's mind going back to the last 24 hours as he picked up the conditioner, squirting some in his hand. They were so concerned about the state of worry and Virgil's parents might be and when midnight hit and they had no way of contacting them. Now, Pat only wondered what kind of parents allowed their child to get so bad without noticing. We were wondering if you wanted to call your parents. Patton whispered cautiously. Virgil tensed, his shoulders shifting upward as he ducked his head. Patton let out that hang in the air as he gently pressed his hands into Virgil's scalp again, working out the renewed tension from Virgil's muscles. The silence stretched on, Patton helping him dip back his head, hand brushing through his hair to help rinse the conditioner out. As he helped the other to sit up, Virgil mostly immediately braced himself against the tub, trying to pull himself out. Patton frowned as he reached to help Virgil stand with wrapping him in a towel as they went. Virgil was standing, eyes shifting around the room, dripping on the floor for a moment. Patton carefully helped him to sit up on the toilet. Virgil's control over his limbs seemed to be returning to him as the other barely leaned against Patton as they went. Patton grabbed the pajamas, hands gently brushing against Virgil's as he handed them to the other. Patton's eyes softened at him as they made contact, and Virgil's mouth dropped open. Patton froze. Virgil's face was helpless, eyes full of fear that Patton just wanted to crush in a hug. Virgil's mouth kept opening and closing as Patton just smiled at him, waiting. I, 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 I don't, Virgil stated, making Patton frown in confusion. Uh, you don't what? Patton asked hesitantly, voice soft as he watched Virgil grimace his face pulling as he yanked his eyes away from Patton. I, I, I don't uh, have, or really, they aren't, um, I don't have parents, Virgil stated and Patton's eyes widened. What? What do you mean? Patton asked, and Virgil's face fell. My dad's gone. My mom, she's in the hospital. Patton's eyes widened in horror for a split second before he covered it with a tight smile. Patton was not the time for scaring the other. He was so shaky, 
so unsure. Pan swallowed, letting go of the clothes and pulling his hands away. How about we get you undressed, huh? Pan said, and Virgil nodded. Just head downstairs when you're done. Virgil hunched, nodding as he pulled the towel closer around himself, starting to shiver slightly. Pan wanted to cry. He reached out, pulling Virgil in for another hug. Whether it was to reassure Virgil or himself, he wouldn't be able to tell you. When Patton left the bedroom, bathroom, his mind was screaming at him. He sighed, wishing not for the first time that he could have collected as Logan usual, usually was in these situations, as strong as Roman could be. Logan wouldn't have freaked out. He would have offered a solution. Patton sighed one more time, hand pulling down his face before he reached it out to trail down the banister as he moved down the stairs. Logan's eyes scanned over the set of Roman made, knowing Patton and Roman they both wanted to want to leave Virgil's side. He also knew that Roman got easily antsy if he left in one spot without something to do. But Virgil was just getting well. They didn't want to push it with too much activity. So, logically, Logan collected every soft object in the house, pushing the two couches in the living room together, cushions facing each other, in front of the TV, and throwing all what he collected in a pile. Roman had walked out of the kitchen, looking at the pile for a mere six seconds before he apparently decided to add more creative flair, immediately pulling some of the thinner blankets to make a canopy, pinned it to the ceiling with a thumbtack, and he arranged all the pillows and blankets in, quote-unquote, the best way. Logan's eyes were pulled away from Roman, who was piling pillows together, to see Patton walking down the stairs, his face pinched in a way that Logan didn't like. Is Virgil okay? Roman asked at the same time Logan had said. Did he mention his parents? And didn't the fact that the first thing he asked isn't to see if his soulmate is okay make him feel horrible? Patton paused. I stuck on the floor for a few more seconds before he pulled them back up. And, oh, well, in his words, his dad is gone, and he also said his mom is in the hospital. Logan felt something in his chest sink, turning to Roman, whose eyebrows were at his hairline. His mouth opened slightly. You mean... Roman began. He's been alone for... How does he even have a home? Roman's voice cracked as he asked the question and Patton shrugged. Just as Logan opened his mouth, Virgil walked down the stairs, his wet hair tousled, pajinas hanging off his frame slightly. Roman and Patton turned, doing their best to smile at him, Roman moving away from their set up to gently wrap an arm around Virgil's middle. Let's get you under some blankets, okay? We want to talk to you. Virgil tense, something in a way that had Roman pulling him to his chest again. No, no, this isn't anything. Uh, Virgil, we want to make sure you're okay, all right? Virgil nodded in Roman's chest as he pulled them both of them to the blanket fort. Logan's face was as neutral, neutral as he can make it and watched Roman absently cocoon Virgil in blankets. Virgil's way to concern him. Of course it did, but there was nothing he could do about it that makes sure that Patton didn't feed him too much too quickly because of it. Patton walked over, Logan watching before slowly moving behind him, taking the other's lead. Roman adjusted his PJs before climbing in after Virgil. Patton went in next. Logan ducked inside, pushing himself into the corner near the entrance, body tense as he watched the situation unfold. Patton fussed over Virgil, his hands tucking blankets more firmly around him as, pill as he pulled pillows to prop him up more. Virgil's face was focused, eyes starting after the other, watching each movement with a rapt attention, eyes flickering over the form, like if he blinked, everything around him would suddenly disappear. Logan watched it could stay this way, wished they could stay here forever and never have to worry about or deal with issues. They couldn't do that. As soon as Patton had made Virgil as comfortable as physically possible, Logan had reached to get the first bit of information they needed. Where are you living, Virgil? Logan asked, and Virgil hunched his shoulders. Roman reached out to tuck Virgil underneath one of his arms. Um, my, my apartment, 
Virgil said, and Logan made a confused eye contact with Patton. Um, I thought your parents... I... Yeah, yes. I don't have... Um, I don't have parents um, right now. Logan felt something in his chest fall. You mean, Virgil, how are you living in an apartment with no of age adult to manage the finances of such an arrangement? Virgil was silent for a moment, eyes looking between their faces before his face started to go red, tears streaming as his breathing hitched. I, I, I thought that maybe at, at first it was so temporary, but everything is always temporary rary, and then it's forever and I thought I would just have to cover hospital bills for a while and she'd be back before the rent was due but but I don't I got a job I was going to get to but Virgil Logan stopped him his pen pulled him over wrapping the boy in a hole as Logan continued are you saying you're paying for your rent and your mother's hospital bills Virgil let a small sigh pitch sound like a wounded animal, and Logan pulled one of his hands up to his forehead. No self-respecting landlord would take money from a teenager, which meant that if Virgil was paying for rent, he had to live somewhere that Logan assumed wasn't the most ideal place for living. Then there was the hospital. Any hospital wouldn't accept money from a teenager. He'd have to ask more about that. But more importantly to him was how. How did this hospital, this landlord, how did none of them call the authorities? Why wouldn't Virgil seek help to get out of the situation? Why wouldn't Virgil contact them? Logan's head reeled the original question, hitting him in the face. Why hadn't Virgil been with them all these years? Why wasn't he... He leant against them during the movie nights, or pressed into one of their sides when it was time to eat. Where was Virgil for the last four years? Logan kneeled down, pulling himself over the small pile of bodies. Roman was leaning back, holding Virgil's body to his chest as Patton wrapped his other in a hug from the front, tipping Virgil's head against his shoulder. The other was so unsure, his arms floating just over Patton's back, his eyes wide over the back of Patton's shoulders as he hovered them, unsure whether or not he could place them down. Logan sat beside them, propping up Virgil's chin enough to get him to look at him. "'We love you, Virgil,' Logan said, stating the word as one of the many facts he possessed, aiming it and firing at whatever was plaguing the other. "'We love you.' "'Always,' Roman said, tightening as he held the other. "'Always.' Pettum pulled away, placing a kiss on the other's forehead before suddenly turning, gripping the collar of Logan's shirt and pulling him into the pile. Logan yelped, his face suddenly darkening with a deep blush as Pettum kissed him on the nose. Virgil laughed, the snickering breaking through his watery sound of his throat, the tension going with it as all of them joined. The room suddenly erupted with laughter. Virgil's sides ached, his eyes were watering as he laughed, the Catholic feeling pooling in his stomach as the last few days melted and the flesh of all their bodies pressed up against his. They piled around him, circling him in the way that would normally be suffocating. Roman holding it, him to his chest, looking with one arm behind Roman's head and the other draped across Virgil's abdomen. Patton had both an arm and a leg draped over him. The contact was warm. It was weighty and full as he basketed the kind of human contact that it hadn't had since he was five. Roman held him in a security, and Virgil couldn't help but feel awful. He felt awful as each issue came in forefront of his mind. He didn't have time for this. He couldn't be with them the way they were with each other. He had a sick mother to visit. That's to pay, a job to get to. Their faces were so peaceful, his heart ached, but he couldn't bask in warmth. Not right now, at least. Now when there's so much to do. I have... I have work, Virgil said, and he felt the eyes on them, the weight of the words pressing in his skin, making him go cold. I have a shift, and then I have to visit my um, mom in in the hospital, and I... I, 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 I don't... We, we all have school. I, I, I can't. Virgil's breath was heavy now, and the others pulled away. 
Wait, no, 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 no. I, I, I'm sorry. I, I, I'm sorry. Virgil flinched away as little as Patton reached his arm out to brush the thumb against his cheek. Patton frowned, letting his hand fall, and Virgil felt guilt clench in his stomach. He just had to ruin everything. He had so much to do. He was missing work. He couldn't miss work. He'd lose the apartment, or maybe he wouldn't be able to pay the hospital. Maybe his mother would die because of him. His hand shook as he reached up to his face, feeling the tears that he didn't realize had started to fall. His body was vibrating, the feeling making his limbs go numb. He he jumped, feeling an arm circling around his shoulders, eyes turning to Logan, who was sitting next to him. Virgil, can you breathe for me? Logan asked, and Virgil shook his head, looking down, and Logan tilted his head back up. Virgil, you need to breathe with me. Can you look at me, please? Virgil's eyes looked back up to Logan, and they made eye contact. Logan placed Virgil's hand on his chest, taking a deep breath, and Virgil slowly felt the rhythm. Deep breath. Hold. Slowly exhale. His lungs slowly became less tight as soon as he could breathe again. He let himself collapse, moving a fully lean against Logan's front. Roman re-entered the blanket fort. Virgil hadn't even noticed he left, holding a glass of water. He held it out to Virgil, and Virgil took it, drawing a long sip, before handing it back to Roman. Now, Virgil, I think, um, I think we need to discuss all this, Logan said, and Virgil slumped. They were going to kick him out, tell him that he's too much, too damaged. They don't want you, they don't even know you, of course they don't want you. Virgil hadn't realized his breath had begun to speed up again until Patton was holding and humming. No, no, sweetie, it's nothing bad. Virgil opened his mouth, his untrustworthy tongue about to take the rinse of the door opened and shut. There was silence. The clicking of keys hitting the bowl as an unfamiliar older woman looked up from her place by the front door. Oh, oh, who's your guys' new friend? Virgil looked up, the makeshift door of the tent propped open from when Roman had gotten a glass of water. His eyes made contact with the woman, everything suddenly draining from him as he froze, eyes glancing to the others. Oh, um, that's a really long story, Mom, Roman said, and his mom frowned, her eyes looking to Virgil up and down as her hand hesitantly went to loosen up at the collar she was wearing. What a sight Virgil must be. Half of his face scraped and bruised, his skin pale, his body bony. Are you okay, sweetheart? She asked, and Virgil f felt his mind reeling, backpedaling at the time when his own mom had called him sweetheart, bringing up moments he didn't want to remember, didn't want to relive ever again. He froze, mind caught in so many feelings that made him go numb, all emotion dissipating from him as he looked at this woman, this mother. Yeah, he said, blank. The others looked alarmed. I have a shift at work. I need to go, he said, and the other's eyes widened. Roman's mom opened her mouth before closing it again. Um, are, are you sure, sweetie? You look a little worse for wear. I, yeah, I, I need, I, I need to leave. He moved to stand. His wrist suddenly caught on Logan's gripped wrist. No, Logan said. You need to stay, Petta nodded. Forever, he added, and Virgil stood, half standing up, his eyes glazed over, his mind blank. He started shaking, his body uncontrollably vibrating, as anguish rose in his chest. He started sobbing, all harsh breathing and whimpering as he had slowly pulled back to the others, hugging between Logan and Patton. His watery eyes glanced to where Roman was whispering with his shocked mother, but as Patton fit Virgil's head into the crook of his neck, he let himself not care about that, not care about the meaning or what would happen if an adult found out, not care about every voice that rose in his mind, not care about every lie his own self-doubt had fed him since the day he was born. He could deal with all that later. He'd fight his own demons when he wasn't being faced down with the idea of safety. Finally, safety. Virgil, you're staying. Virgil barely heard Roman's mother over the sound of heavy breathing, the words only causing more crying as he let himself be held. He brought his face deeper into Patton's neck, and Logan held him tighter. Okay... 
He got out, his shoulders hunched, his crying developed in the sniffles, as Roman finally joined the bunch again, his arms wrapping around all of them, his phone clutched in his right hand. He was where he needed to be. Fate doesn't make mistakes. My mom said if you were really worried about work, you should call in sick. Virgil felt the familiar words rise to his tongue. I can't, I can't afford to miss a day. He didn't say them, though. He let his words die on his tongue and nodded his head, holding his hand out for Roman to drop the phone in. He was too tired to fight, too willing to let them force the dark parts of his brain back, the parts that told him he had to work himself until he broke every single day. Are you sure you want to do it now, kiddo? You can wait a moment longer. Virgil shook his head. He was either going to do it now or never. He couldn't give himself time to think about it. Not now. The phone was placed in his palm. The other was pulling away as his finger shakily dialed. This is Strip's comic. How am I? Uh, Alan, it's me. He said, voice raw from crying. Virgil, what the hell? You sound awful. Virgil rolled his eyes. Thanks. I am not. I'm not going to be coming in today. Alan sighed. Yeah, I'd hope so. S you looked like you might die yesterday. Virgil's eyebrows raised to his hairline. Uh, you saw that? He asked, and Alan laughed. Yeah, dude, you dead sprinted right past my class with Roman behind you. Few kids noticed that. Virgil swallowed, eyes glancing to the others, who had moved a little whizzed away. They whispered to each other, trying their best to give Virgil privacy with his phone call. What was that about anyway? Alan asked, and Virgil felt something stop in his throat. Nothing. He stopped looking at the floor, as his mind and mouth struggled to agree. Why lie? What's the point? I... he's... Um, they're my... Virgil took a deep breath. My soulmates. The line was silent for a second, but before Virgil could backpedal, before he could yell at himself for being so stupid, Alan spoke again. Oh, I thought... <laughs> All right, cool. I mean, yeah, cool. Yeah, I, I mean, you guys look a lot alike. I guess it was kind of obvious, but Virgil's mind halted. Wait, we don't look alike, he asked, and Alan laughed. Dude, you totally do. The pressure in Virgil's lung deflated as he laughed. Yeah, I... whatever. I'm not coming in today. Yeah, dude. Soulbound or whatever. Get your fix. Virgil smiled, eyes glancing back to the other three who had started another cuddle pile. Yeah, I... I, I, I think I will. Chapter 10 Virgil's body was weighty. Limp as he cracked his eye open, everything warm and fuzzy. The red splash of Roman's sash attracted his eyes. The stain pressed into his cheek. The eyes widened for a moment, working to recover memories from his sleep as the sudden rush of fear made him tense. Roman's arm pressed into him a little more securely, melting the tension in his limbs as the events from the week crashed into him. Hey, it's okay. Roman whispered, his hand stroking Virgil's back in long movements, the darkly lit room making his eyes flutter closed for a second, mind threatening to plunge him into sleep again. Virgil's eyes glanced over at Roman's shoulder, cranking his neck to look over at the other's chest, his eyes moving to see his mother, the blankets folded around her in the, her hospital bed, her body in the same position it always was. The lights were turned off the beeping from the heart monitor pulling the silence out of the air. Virgil let his limbs go lax, his head dropping to Roman's chest. His, the other let out an amused puff of air through his nose. Roman's face relaxed, a smile on his face, his hands gentle as he pulled Virgil up by the armpits, dragging him till he was able to press his face into the crook of Roman's neck, which he did. Hey, it's okay. I'm right here. Virgil nodded into the other's neck, too busy curling further into Roman's warmth to be able to give much of a response. Roman let his hand trail up under the back of his shirt, the side of Roman's fist slowly ripping in circles. Virgil's breath evened, his eyes litting. 
What is? Roman's voice was shocked, his voice pausing as Fran muttered his features. Virgil froze, his eyes opening again, his back going rigid as he made to pull away. The arms straightened, only for Roman to shush him, rubbing a bit more firmly, till Roman was back to a pile of goo in his arms, his head safely tucked under the other's chin. You have two scars going down your back, Roman stated, his hand brushing along the thick lines that Virgil knew crossed over his shoulder blades. Virgil shrugged, and Roman held him tighter. I'd like to know if you would tell me. Virgil's mind blinked, the awful moment of pain, the helplessness filling his mind, dragging him back into time. A soft hand brought him back, threading through his hair as Roman rocked a little side to side. You don't have to, if you don't want to, Roman started. The words rose in Virgil's throat. The moment in time was so scarring, but he didn't feel it anymore. It wasn't there. It hadn't been some time now. No, no, I... I... I want to tell you. Roman's arms wrapped around Virgil, holding him more securely to his chest. Re the, the um old bully of mine, Virgil began, his arms uncurling from Roman's sides as he wrapped them around Roman's shoulders. Roman gently thumbed over the scars. They, um, in third grade. His mind went blank, petaled, cropping over every laugh, the close color of watercolor marker almost brushing on his skin, the fear palpable as his fist quickly coiled in Ricky's cheek, the fury in Ricky's eyes as Virgil held the shaking fist in fear, the horror at his own action as he looked up to see Ricky's face, the feeling of rough, bruising hands on his arms. I... 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 Virgil's throat got stuck, the light brush of Roman's fingertips on his back bringing them back just enough till he realized he wasn't breathing. He took a deep breath. You don't have to tell me, Roman stated, the sincerity in his voice making Virgil swallow. No, I, I, I mean, I want to, I just... He pressed his face into the other's neck for a second. I... they pushed me back into the pipes of the school boiler room, Virgil said, and Roman clutched him. It did it. It did that to um, to my my back. Roman inhaled sharply, his breath burning in the back of his throat. I am so sorry, Roman said. His voice choked. Virgil pulled away, eyes wide. The tears pricking at the corners of Roman's eyes made his voice stop in his throat. His eyes glancing over to the other's face as he reached out to brush the tears away. Why, I, I, I don't... Virgil stuttered, his voice wavering. We could have... I could have done something. I was there, I mean. I started Roman, and Virgil felt his heart crack. Don't do that. Don't do what I do. No, no, you, I don't... Don't blame yourself. I, that's just always was. Virgil's mouth snapped shut, knowing that wouldn't make Roman any happier with the situation. Virgil leant forward, kissing Roman's forehead, wrapping his arms around the other and clutching, hope to drive away the sadness, even just a little. Boys? A voice echoed, and daylight from the hallway flooded the room, and Roman's mom cracked open the door. Virgil pulled back. Roman's mouth pulled up slightly, pecking him softly on the lips before smiling. Virgil blushed as Roman turned his head. Yes, Mom? Roman asked, his throat still choked. We'll need to leave if you want to make it to school on time, Roman sighed, gripping Virgil's sides as he pulled. He swung his legs off the couch, his movements shifting, Virgil to be essentially sitting on Roman's lap. Can't leave the others waiting, Roman said, hugging Virgil firmly one last time before pulling his arms away. Virgil smiled as Roman helped him stand, his arms going to praise against the other as his legs wobbled once before firming. F Virgil let Roman grab their stuff, holding both of their backpacks up in the show of strength, one that was over-dramatized since Virgil only had two binders in his pack to begin with. He walked, following Roman and his mom through the halls of the hospital. Roman's mom whispered to him, Virgil's stomach twisting, the awkward feeling making him sh slow his pace, pulling back, giving them space as he walked. He nodded his head a few of the nurses, 
that he had seen before, their eyes widening, scanning the people he was with. Unfamiliar sights to the normal crowd of the Como ward. Virgil's head snapped to the side as Roman threw a hand around Virgil's waist, Virgil yelping as Roman pulled him close. The weight of the other hand on his shoulder had him looking up and away from Roman. Roman's mom was looking at him, kind eyes, hand cool. Virgil swallowed, the weight of the hand remaining him of everything he'd never had. She gently pulled away, keeping eye contact with Virgil as she did so. Her hand brushed against his as she handed him a piece of paper. Virgil struggled to swallow a lump in his throat. Now he knew what they were whispering about. The last of the filling was done. They were now his legal guardians under the soulmate custody law. Too much. This was too much. This, They were doing too much for him. His mind slipped over the meaning, the contagious of the piece of paper as he was slowly packed into the car. He started his hands, tracing along the edges of the paper, his eyes flickering over the words again and again. He wasn't alone. The ache of coming home to a cold house before getting ready to work a six-hour shift was suddenly dissipated, and what he have to give them for it. What do you have to give them in return? His eyes pulled away, looking up to see Roman smiling at him, the other's face twitching a little as he looked into Virgil's eyes. I know that face, Roman said quietly. What's wrong? Virgil shrugged and Roman frowned, the look making Virgil's heart fall, his soul reaching out to fix the damage he didn't mean to do. Roman rose his hand, extending a pinky to Virgil. Pinky promised you'll tell me later? Virgil smiled, his head shaking a little as he hooked their pinkies. Later, um, yeah, I'll, I'll tell you later. Virgil nodded, his hand dropping eyes pulling away to the mere second that he needed to register that they were pulling up to the school. His head turned, eyes landing on Logan and Patton, who were sitting outside the entrance, waiting for them. Waiting for him. His heart filled up as they pulled up, Patton waving vigorously at as Logan smiled. Virgil waved back, his eyes looking over them one more time as they turned to grab his backpack from the back. Patton was there suddenly, gripping Virgil's hand, as Logan and Roman started talking about something. Together, they walked towards the building. Virgil hesitated at the door, his body halting, Patton turning his head to look at him, Virgil's face twisting, giving the other a half-smile that had Patton tilting his mouth. Patton pulled at his hand, the force urging him up the steps. He walked forward, body hunching through the doorway, hand twitching to pull up his hood. Virgil sighed at himself, mind yelling at him. There was nothing to be worried about. Logically, he knew that he wasn't doing anything that warranted shame. Ten years of hiding would tell him differently. He let the others lead him through the hallways, pat and smile as warm as always. Roman's side slotted against Virgil's, his arm around Virgil's shoulders as he talked. He fit, inexplicably. The cramped area he had looked at, he had longed after so long. It expanded. The area he could never see himself in had moved to fit him. The warmth in his chest made him press into the others. The occasional confused glance displayed turned away faster than Virgil's mind had told him. The catastrophic scenarios that played in his head never came to pass as they pulled away to go to each other's classes. Virgil felt he had enough warmth to last the day. Virgil had fallen into his routine, his body moving on autopilot until Patton was looping their arms together. Virgil jumped, his heart pounding in his chest until the other's face came into view. "'Where are you going?' Patton asked, and Virgil paused, his mind running through his words. "'Um, the library?' Patton frowned, and Virgil felt himself backtrack, his mind screaming at him to fix whatever he said. His mind was cut off, eyes widening as the other yanked him a different way. It's lunch. Don't you want to eat with us? Virgil felt panic rise in his chest. He didn't have a lunch. His smile was tight as he let the other pull him, his mind running through excuses that melted under the press of the other's body against his side. The panic was palatable. It might not leave, but he could work with it. Work through it. The lunchroom was loud. The sound of everyone talking was echoing around the room. Virgil's eyes scooped around, the tiles and lights clashing as students romped around, running and talking. Roman was already sitting at the table, waving them both over as he saw them walking. 
Penn waved back, pulling on Virgil's arm as he yanked him forward. All righty, Patton said loudly, basically throwing Virgil on the bench next to Roman as he placed his bag on the table, his hand moving to unzip it, his body bouncing in a little. Here's yours, Patton said, handing Roman a bag lunch decorated with doodles and red marker. Logan, for when he gets back, he stated, putting a doctor who lunchbox down in front of the spot beside him. Oh, mine, he said, pulling out a can lunchbox. And here's yours, Virgil. He pulled out another bag lunch. He slid it in front of Virgil, and doodles of clouds and stars made his eyes water. Um, th thanks. Th thanks, Virgil said. Another field dispelled as Patton beamed. His eyes glanced to the other to see Roman has already opened his lunch. Roman happily pointing to and commenting on each food he had put in Roman's bag, Patton's arms flailing as he gestured and explained why he put in each item. Virgil watched for a moment, eyes soft and body relaxed. His eyes moved down, his hands carefully pulling out the staples of each bag as he tried to preserve the pictures. Sorry for the delay. I did not expect there to be a line for the water, Logan said, circling around the table, which a lo large water bottle in his hand. He sharply extended his bottle towards Virgil. Virgil jumped, his eyes widened, hand hesitantly floating in front of the object before and surely making eye contact with Logan. It's a calorie shake. It'll help you gain weight. Roman's mother suggested them. You're supposed to drink one a day, Logan stated, and Virgil let his hand fold around the table. Logan pulled away, slipping into the seat next to Patton. Virgil popped a cr cracker from a Ziploc bag into his mouth, opening the thermos of soup as he went. If you have any digestive or stomach issues, we need to know. We want to keep an eye on that for medical emergencies. Virgil blushed, ducking his head and nodding as he poked a straw and bottle through his, into his mouth, the chocolate taste of the calorie shake filling his mouth. "'Hey, Virgil!' a voice yelled. Virgil snapped his head away from them, almost inhaling some of the shake as he went. Alan basically ran up to their table. Er, "'And you guys are too, I, I guess,' he said with a strong shrug. "'You're not going to be able to believe this. Well, I mean, I totally called it, but I, I know what you're... So, like, so, yeah. Anyway, one of your essay things was found by some kid of Scooter or, or something. Or Scouter. Yeah, Scouter, not Scooter. I'm silly. He bounced, flailing his arms a little. He, like, interrupted my English class so we could pull Mr. Miss Deller and ask, like, who you were. It's amazing. Virgil felt his cheeks heat up, had his hands excitedly clapping together with a squeal as Roman's face lit up. Well, I suppose this calls for celebration, Logan said, unsurely looking to the other two, and Patton's high-pitched noise was turned on him as he started shoving against the other's arm in excitement. I... what? Virgil asked, and Alan nodded. Right? Well, this calls for another trip to the Cedar Cafe, Roman said, and Alan's face fell, his eyebrows knitting together. Virgil and I snapped back and forth from Alan to Roman, his smile falling a little. Oh, I don't know if you remember, Roman began as Alan's mouth fell open. Isn't that the place across the street from Strips? Alan asked, and the other three blinked before glancing back at Virgil. Virgil hunched, face pulling back in a grimace. Strips? Logan asked. The comic shop across the street from Cedar Cafe? Yeah, we work there, Alan said. Anyway, I have a date with a sushi roll, so see you guys. Alan patted Virgil's back, walking off as the others looked at Virgil. He was half hoping the whole stalking thing would never be brought up. Silly him for thinking those things could just roll by smoothly. Besides, who is he to keep that from them? They deserve to know how creepy he was if they're going to be together for this moment on. I am- um, you, you guys were there a lot, and I- I- he slumped. I watched you, and I- I watched you guys- his words sped up, his voice raising in a pitch as he went. I, I, I'm so sorry. I, I, I know it's really creepy. I, I, I just... Patton's hand came up to fold Virgil's cheek, making his words stop. Oh, kiddo, he sighed, and Roman folded him in closer, wrapping his arm around Virgil's waist. To think you were always so close, and we never knew it, Logan mumbled. Oh, Patton face palms, dragging his hand down his face before pointing at Virgil. You were always at our events, Virgil blushed, shrugging. You saved the performance that we 
will make my acting career, Roman said, and they all went quiet, Virgil letting himself be pulled to the side, pressing into Roman. All this time, I can't help but wonder, why didn't you say anything, Virgil? Logan began, and Virgil's eyes connected with the table, absently sipping on the calorie shake again. I, I, I didn't think, I, I, I thought you guys wouldn't like me, Virgil said simply, simplifying years of turmoil into a sentence. Days spent staring and wondering, worried about slotting himself in places he couldn't fit, thoughts of paranoia and becoming an obligation rather than a partner. His mind wrapped around to his original thoughts, the idea that Faith chose him because it knew he would never approach them, that his role as a soulmate was to sit and bask. He summed it up because how could he begin to tell them all that? What? Patton asked, his voice heavy. But we're soulmates, Roman stated, and Logan's eyes slowly widened. I, 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 I just don't know... Virgil said, letting himself slump over the table. Virgil, we'll need to talk about this more. I recommend with a qualified professional, therapist maybe. I don't think we... Uh, we'll deal with it later. Logan finally said, just as Virgil's breath had started to speed up. Logan reached out his hand to brush out Virgil's hair out of his face. Eat. We'll work on it together. Later. Virgil smiled, his hand tracing along the outside of the thermos before tipping some into the soup of the lid. Penn smiled wide and Virgil ate, and Roman reached over the table to ruffle the other's hair. Virgil's hand soaked in warmth of the coffee cup and a small platter of baked goods in front of them. Pettin would f fudge pieces from it, turning to press them to Virgil's lips until Virgil relented, allowing the other to feed him bits by hand. Virgil's face was warm from where the sunlight pressed against it. Roman's laughter filled in the calf as Logan leaned against him. Virgil smiled. So, what was your writing about? Patton asked, making Virgil turn his eyes wide in surprise as his eyes flickered around the room. Uh, it seemed so long ago. So much had happened since then, the subject matter seemed so far away now. The emotions he had felt out of touch in a way that was surprising and almost rel re relieving. Mm, my self, kind of, Virgil said with a shrug, and Patton smiled at him. Like your life story? Patton asked, and Virgil polished, his shoulder failing as he stared at the table in front of him. More more like emotions? Like, like emotions, I guess. Virgil finished. No one wants to hear my life story. Virgil said, his throat breaking in a nervous chuckle. I beg to differ, Roman said, joining the conversation with a very big voice. Logan adjusted his glasses. Actually, Roman is right. The kind of emotional complex situations you have faced over your life would make a rather popular story. Virgil blushed, his shoulders lifting and falling in a deep shrug. I, 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 I don't know, <laughs> Virgil stated, and Patton just slightly tapped his nose. Oh, that's okay. I was just wondering if you would let us read it, Patton began, making Virgil's eyes widen. I love to see the writing that you got a scout in such a tizzy. I, they, I, I, yeah, I, I mean, they weren't, most likely, in a tizzy. I, I just, I, I guess they, I don't know. <laughs> Virgil's tongue tripped over itself enough times to make him shut up, mouth snapping closed. Logan frowned, eyes glancing up and down Virgil. I was wondering about that. You're stuttering, I mean, Logan stated. Virgil looked at Logan, his eyes discouraged, shoulders pulled inward. I, I, I know, it's, it's annoying. I, d I just tried to st Stop, I, I swear, I, I never... He shut off, voice betraying him once more. No, no, kiddo, we don't mind. I think it's kind of cute, actually. Patton smiled, wrapping both arms around Virgil's arm. Your speech pattern is underdeveloped. What age did your father die? Virgil glanced at Logan, eyebrows raised just a little, his eyes trailed to one side. Um, I was four or five, he said, eyes snapping back to the other. I see. And your mother, when did she become sick? Virgil hesitated. 
Another sob, sob story. Another unnecessary thing they need to feel guilty about his life. Another dark cloud hanging over them. He couldn't tell them that. He couldn't tell them the truth about that. Why not? Why not tell them? Their eyes all focused on his, pet and pressing into his side, Logan's patience being showcased in the still, uninterpreted way he was sitting. Roman Italy, stirring his drink, slightly slouched over the table like he was ready and willing to wait all day. Why lie? She got... she wasn't... I, it wasn't really sickness. Virgil started, and Roman's eyes glanced around in confusion, Logan nodding his head for the other to continue. She was... Um, after Dad died, she couldn't, but it wasn't her fault. She was just so sad, and she... She drank a lot. Patton's grip tightened as he pulled Virgil a little closer to himself. Virgil, she didn't hurt you, did she? Patton asked, and Virgil shook his head vigorously. No, she just... Virgil trailed off, mind filling with every unintended injury she never cared about. Every night she had passed out on the couch. Every day he walked to elementary school because she was too unconscious for him to be able to wake her up. Every day he was forgotten somewhere. Every night she would promise things that she could never deliver. She just... She tried her best. She gave her all to to work, to get through the, the, the tragedy. He told himself that again. He told himself that every night. Well, Logan said, clearing his throat. <coughs> I, your speech pattern... Brennan was likely affected by your environment, Logan stated. You most likely didn't get enough practice in speaking as a child. Virgil shrugged. That sounded just about right. Yeah, I, I mean, with the... Yeah, Virgil said, his head tilting as he nodded. Yeah, he stated once more, sighing as he did so. Well, that's easily f fixable. Unlike with a speech impediment, there isn't much to work on. We just need to give you the practice you need in terms of speaking. Virgil's lips quirked up, and he nodded. Sounds good. Roman's eyes widened, his head craning around the others to look outside the window. Virgil turned around, Roman's mom running up the steps of the cafe. She sprinted to their table, gesturing for them to leave. Emergency! was the only thing she said when they were all up. Crumpled bills thrown on the table and jackets collected. Patton held tight to Virgil, all of them following in Roman's mom's sprint pace as they piled into the car. His mom flooring in and they parked of the parking lot and moved to the quickest way to the highway. A oh, mom, what's going on? Roman said, and Virgil's body rigid under Patton's touch. Roman's mother glanced at them, making brief eye contact with Virgil through the rear view mirror before she sighed, looking back onto the road. Virgil your mom is in critical condition. Her liver is fully shutting down. Virgil's heart stopped in his chest, his mind fuzzing up as the others glanced at him, mouth slowly open. Virgil's mind was blank as he watched the doctors run around, yelling about clotting and sticking needles into her. We were just here, he stated, his voice monotone. This morning, we were here. She, she was fine. I know, sweetie. Roman's mom pulled Virgil back. The movement yanked his eyes away from the window of the room just as he the monitor turned to a spreading zigzag of the flat line she helped him settle into the chair a spot one or two down from where the others were sitting sympathetic looks making them cringe he didn't want that he didn't need that right now he didn't need that ever the blinding white of the hallway blurred the edges of his vision his mind was frozen his heart was numb or more like it wasn't numb it wasn't anything his mind was telling him and whispering the fact that, technically, he shouldn't have devastated. He shouldn't be distraught, screaming, crying. But he isn't. The emptiness of the house was now full. The nights not plagued by the hum of the TV, the scent of alcohol washed out of all of his clothing. He should be upset. She tried so hard, but it wasn't enough. She self destructed so much harder than she loved him. His stomach hurt with hunger more times than she had filled it. Her eyes 
stared at him blankly more times than ever did lovingly, her death was a relief. And if that didn't make him feel guilty, is all hell. Virgil? Virgil turned his head, the voice barely breaking through the inner dialogue. His eyes came back into focus slowly, making eye contact with Patton, who had sat in the chair directly next to him. How you feeling, kiddo? There's a beat. A second of silence. Then Virgil burst into tears. His heart was weighty and full, but not for the loss of his mother. Not for the person he had supposed to have some intimate connection with. No, he was crying out in pain of the last ten years. The decade weighing off on him as he cried, tipping forward, face pressing against Patton's shoulder as the other instantly curled around him. Patton was rocking back and forth, the plastic chairs tilting with their bodies as he hushed him. His mother was gone. There was n no more bills to pay, no one to worry about every day for the rest of his life. She was gone. And it was awful. The respite he found in the words made him sick. But it was there. Every breath he inhaled was lighter, but the guilt weighed in his stomach. She... 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 she, she wanted to... she wanted to die, he said, telling himself more than Patton. Heart turning and bulking as it turned the information over. She wanted to die more than she loved him. He cried. The warmth of Roman's body pressed into his back as he pulled Virgil from the chair before settling Virgil onto his chest. He hummed, clutching him. There as Patton and Logan squeezed into the other sides of him, Patton gently running his hand through Virgil's hair as Logan gripped one of Virgil's hands in his own. As Roman gently slung to him, Virgil felt as if everything would be okay. Even if it's not right now, or today, even if it's not soon, he loved him more than he hated himself, and he could work with that. Thank you so much for watching. This was very fun to read. We have two more chapters, which are going to be read next week, which very fun, very fun. As I brought up earlier, we're starting this thing called A Gift of Fan Fiction, which is a December project I'm working on where I read a Cinecide's one-shot each day of December as a present of sorts. I don't know if that counts, but, you know, I'm trying, and it sounds fun. So if you like to participate in writing a one-shot for that series, you could click the video entitled The Gift of Fan Fiction on your screen right now. Please feel free to check out my socials in the link in my social links in the description. I could talk, sorry, I can't. And feel free to subscribe if you want to hear more of the story. And like always, do your best.